Hey everybody, welcome back to World History. We're going to be doing section two of our Renaissance unit today. So go ahead and get your notes out and let's get started. All right. Once everything loads. So we're talking about the Renaissance in the North today. So we're talking about how those ideas of the Renaissance moved out of Italy and into the rest of Europe. One of the biggest things that helped with that is the printing press invented by Johann Gutenberg, this lovely gentleman right here. He invented a printing press with movable type and is the first uh, device to print a complete Bible. Prior to this, Bibles were handwritten by monks and it would take them weeks upon weeks to write out an entire thing. Now you can make an entire Bible rather quickly with the press. 15 to 20 million books would be produced on the Gutenberg press alone. The impact, it made books a lot cheaper, it raised the literacy rates, and it allowed new ideas and places to be spread all across Europe. Now, just like we talked about last time, we also need to talk about art in Northern Europe. Now, we'll talk about how it began in the city of Flanders with Jean van Eyck, who depicted townspeople in religious scenes in very realistic detail, uh, with like examples being this painting up here. Uh, Peter Bruegel, who depicted peasant life, like this one here. And Peter Paul Rubens, who blended realist and classical styles of art into a new form of art themselves, like this painting here. But by far, probably the most famous out of the north that we could talk about is Albrecht Dürer, a German painter who was directly influenced by the Italian Renaissance and was considered by historians to essentially be the Leonardo da Vinci of the north. He developed a new type of art known as engraving or a design etched onto metal plates with acid. And these are two examples of his work down here. Typically, these pieces caused religious upheaval because they depicted gruesome scenes from the Bible. Now, Northern humanists and writers, again, humanists as a reminder, stress the education and classical learning values of the Renaissance. However, unlike those in Italy that were using Latin primarily, they were writing in their own vernacular or the everyday language of ordinary people. Uh, think of it like as the early examples of German and Russian, Austrian, a lot of our European languages. We also have to talk about people, sorry, like Erasmus, a Dutch priest who wanted social reform. Uh, he wrote a book entitled The Impraise of Folly, and he was the first person to translate the Bible in Greek and the vernacular so all people could have access to it. One of the biggest issues with early literature was it was primarily designed for the clergy, meaning they were the only ones that were taught how to read. The everyday person did not learn how to read. They just went to church and listened to the priest read the Bible to them. But now, with people like Erasmus, who translated it into their own vernaculars, all people could learn to read the Bible. Now, inside of like some social and political talks, we also have to talk about Thomas More and his idea for social reform. He preached for an idea known as a utopia, or an ideal society with peace and harmony, in which all people were educated. Now, I will point out, as nice as a utopia sounds on paper, it has never truly been achieved in real life. We'll talk about some examples of people attempting to reach utopia throughout this semester, but it's not really going to happen at the level that Moore wanted it to happen. Uh, we also have Francois Rabelais, uh, who was also a writer he, and created things such as the Gargantua and Pantagruel. He wrote in the own vernacular, made fun of religion and education. His form of humor was more on the obscene end, think more like early Saturday Night Live, so think like the early seasons from like the 70s and 80s, not today's version of Saturday Night Live. Now, by far, probably the most famous writer that we could talk about, that you probably know of, is Shakespeare. With a complexity of individuals, realism, and an importance of the classics, he wrote his works in the own vernacular. Shakespeare is by far one of the most influential Renaissance writers that we can talk about. His works have been performed for over 400 years and have been turned into numerous movies, including The Lion King. Yes, that's right, folks. Disney's The Lion King is actually based off the Shakespearean play Hamlet. Uh, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith is based on Othello. 
10 things I hate about yous based off the taming of the shrew. There are hundreds of examples of different Shakespearean uh, plays that have been turned into movies. Now here are just some famous quotes as examples for you. Um, an activity we will be doing today is writing Shakespearean insults. So we'll be doing that in just a moment. And that is actually it for notes for today. I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.